All right, today I'm going to teach you how to install my favorite wiki, which is wiki.js, and we're going to do so using AltaHost. I see they have been pretty well recommended. So I went over and decided to check out their website after they messaged me and said, hey, do you want to check out our website? And I said, yes, let me let me take a look. One of the main things that really drew me to the service was the free DDoS protection and unlimited bandwidth. That's a pretty big deal. I mean, the unlimited bandwidth is a really awesome deal, in my opinion. So you're not going to have to worry about, you know, sharing large files back and forth. And they also have a lot of really easy to use features. So you can get a domain, you got your different hosting packages, you can do shared hosting, WordPress hosting, but we have VPS hosting, which is, you know, what I'm going to be doing in this video. Then if you want to be a reseller, well, yeah, you can do all that kind of stuff. That's beyond the scope of this video. And then they also have an affiliate account to help pay for your server. So I'm going to do hosting VPS. But if you scroll down here, you can see the VPS basic plans. This is going to be plenty for most people. So that's what we're going to be using today. Now, one of the things that's interesting is, yes, you can come over here and get WordPress hosting with a bunch of different websites. And if all you're doing is WordPress, then this is totally fine and good. But you can also use VPS hosting and do everything yourself. It might be faster, not going to guarantee, but it might be. Before we install a wiki, I'm going to talk to you about why I think you should use a wiki. Now, let's specifically talk about people who are creative people like game devs and stuff where they need somewhere to put their ideas together. A lot of people turn to Confluence or Jira, and those are very good tools. In fact, Kanbans are a little bit different than wikis, and we might need to do a special segment where I talk about open source Kanbans and how to install them on your own server, but that's something for another day. Today we're going to talk about wikis, which I think kind of are the heart of a lot of different projects. If you go and, and use one of those services, yeah, they're very functional, but you're gonna be paying for a lot of times each different user. That's gonna add up. And then let's say once your project is over or if your project takes a break after you're finished with your product, what do you do? Do you keep paying monthly? I think it's much better to be in charge of all of your data for a few different reasons. Number one, well, you don't have to worry about paying a monthly fee other than just paying for your one server. You can have as many users as you want. You can deal with the permissions all on your own. So you don't have to worry about any of that. And then once you're finished, this is the beautiful part, you can take all the stuff that's there, whether it's Docker or whatever, make a backup of it, and then keep it. You don't have to like you know, try going to Confluence and being like, hey, give me a, an offline backup of all my data so that in 10 years I can spin it back up and look at it. They're gonna be like, no, <laughs> you know, it's just not gonna happen. So with something like this, I made a goofy website. We're gonna show you how to make this, but we're getting ahead of ourselves right now. This is a wiki right here. And you know, I made this goofy thing uh, using some AI slop to put it together really quickly so you could see what it was. But you know, you can browse around this wiki. It's really easy to use. And then after you finish making your game, just take this and you know, make a backup, keep it somewhere. And whenever you're ready to get it going again, just get your Ubuntu server up and running, spin this up, and open it back up 10 years down the road, make your remastered version. Actually, probably be two years down the road, yeah. Every two years you need a remaster if you do any bit of business, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna show you how to get the VPS up and running and then we're gonna install wiki.js. AltaHost was nice enough to give me an account to mess around with, so if there's already some stuff here, I'm gonna kind of ignore that and just start my own thing. So I'm gonna order a new service right over here on the sidebar. I'm gonna grab VPS hosting, and then you have operating system options. You got lots of stuff to choose from. I'm just gonna grab the VPS basic right here. It's got one core, one gigabyte of RAM, which is good enough for a few different websites. If you wanna run a few websites at the same time, it'll be no problem, or one like decent to mid-size web application. Also have 30 gigabyte NVMe storage to make everything quick. And I like this, un metered bandwidth so no worries there plus free year of ssl certificates you can also use let's encrypt however you like go ahead and grab this one here click on order now to bring us here you can set up your billing but you notice that we get a discount if you do like you know quarterly semi-annual or whatever but you can do monthly and then switch over if you want to test it out a little bit and then switch over you can do that pick the server location that's nearest you when selecting your operating system it's important to consider what you're installing you can't just pick your favorite one right here you can't just say like oh debian 12 i've heard that's really stable no come up here and go to whatever you're installing we're installing wiki.js, so I want to make sure that I'm installing the correct operating system, and it wants Ubuntu 18.20 or 22.04, so I'm gonna grab 22.04 right there. Now, 
maybe we'll be able to upgrade in the future, but that's beyond the scope of this video and 22.04 is going to have a decent support for a long time. Then we can come down here. If you want a control panel, you can add that on right here. Some of the control panels are free, like Cyber Panel. All the add-ons from $3, but you know, you can get the free version and it works really, really well as a viable alternative to something like cPanel. If you want to pay for cPanel, by all means, but you don't need to. Like AA Panel, Hestia, and Cyber Panel are free and they work really well. So down here, you can tack on some extra disk space if you're going to need it for whatever you're doing. If you're doing a lot of media and stuff, you can also set it up depending on what you're running to have off-site media hosting. Then we have some scripts we can run. So yeah, if you want to install one of these easily, go ahead. But we're going to skip past that. We're doing a new installation. So um, as far as the different SSL goes, I'm going to leave it on none for now and then configure my own SSL because we can do that since we have a VPS. I'm going to click on continue right now and there's all of our information. Uh, promo codes, I might have some for you, I forget, but I'm recording this before I know about the promo codes. So if I gave you any promo codes, I'll put them on the screen right now and you can put them in right here so you can save a little money at checkout. Once that's finished, we can just browse on over to our server and scroll down to the bottom and we'll have all the information we need to log in right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my IP address so that we can log in through SSH and you can use whatever SSH program you prefer. On Windows, I like Kitty, which I don't have installed on this, but it's a fork of putty that I like better. There we go. So I've just got Kitty right here. Paste in my IP address. Like I said, you could do this with Putty or any other SSH program. I mean, you can even do it with the PowerShell or the terminal or whatever. That's going to bring this up. Just say accept. I'm going to ask for your username and password. And again, that's right over here. There we go. There's our password username. There we go. Copy that. So now we've just got, you know, a bare Ubuntu drive. So what I'm going to need to do is point something here. So I hope you have a domain name probably obvious, but you're going to need to point your domain name to this IP address. I'm going to do that before I start doing anything else, because if I want SSH certificates or anything like that, I'm going to need to have my domain pointed right here. I like this. This is cool. Nice ASCII art. Nice little touch, Ulta host. <laughs> I like it. Over to your DNS provider. And so I'm over here. I've got my website. I'm going to click on DNS. Now I need something. Uh, see, I've already got action nerds going somewhere. So let's add a new record and I'm going to create a wiki. So I'm going to do wiki and then put in that address. So what this is going to do, it's going to create wiki.actionnerds.com and that's going to point to our new server. So I'll go ahead and create that. I'm leaving the proxy on, why not? Okay, this will take a couple minutes and then it'll update, but that's all I wanted to do right here. All right, come back over here. And you know, I like to do a couple updates first and this is um, Ubuntu, so we're using apps. Let's just do an app to get update. Or just an app to update. First time it might take a minute, but I always do this before I do anything else. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do an app to upgrade, but you know, may as well do sudo. There we go. Just upgrading and everything to the latest stuff. All right, whenever you come to this, whenever you're working on like, you know, a different server that's not your own server, it's always recommended to keep the existing SSH configuration because it's got special stuff that's just for Ulta host. So I'm going to say keep the local version installed right here. So click on this, hit OK. If you do not keep the local version, well, you know, your SSH may still work when you come back to Ultahost dashboard and try to use the VNC console or something. It's probably not going to work. And then resetting your password and all that might not work either. It may or may not, but just keep the one that's already there. And here it's notifying us that we're going to need to do a reboot because there's a little kernel upgrade. So, yep, just say OK. Now you're going to need to reboot once this is done. And it doesn't matter which services we restart. I mean, of course, just whatever. I'm just going to click OK because I'm rebooting the system. All right, once we're here, we can just type reboot. There's nothing running, so we don't need to do anything special. We're not worried about anything getting messed up. So reboot, press Enter. If you just leave it like this, um, once the machine reboots, it should refresh your session. Well, if it doesn't reboot, we can always just... Hey, that took... OK, I was going to say if it doesn't reboot, we can always just close and open it again, but it worked. All right, now we're going to install Wiki.js on this machine. It's, you know, a lot of Linux stuff is just copying and pasting. So I'm going to put this over here and I've got my installation here for um, Wiki.js. You know what? I had to turn my zone snapping back on. There we go. And you can go there. Good. So what I'm going to do is just go through this and you can basically just copy and paste. So it tells you to update the machine. It did it in its own way. Now we need to install all the updates automatically. Copy this. If you click on copy up here, it'll copy the whole thing. So I'm just going to copy the single line that I need. Shift insert pastes. Press enter. All right. Now we're going to install our dependencies like Docker and all that. No, there are dependencies to Docker. There we go. 
So yep, this is like what Linux people do a lot of the time, just copying and pasting. All right, so that is um, getting our Docker registry going. Excellent. Doing another update before we install Docker because now we've added the Docker uh, repositories and stuff. So this update will add all those sources. Now we're gonna install Docker. Okay, now we need our container. So this is gonna be our container for the wiki. So we're gonna make a directory for that. And we're gonna make a directory inside of our Etcetera folder called wiki. So there we go, make directory. There we go, wiki, easy enough. You wanna see it? I'm sitting with a mic you know, right here. So yeah, it's in here somewhere. Yep, there we are, nothing in here. But yep, that's the directory. We could just keep typing. It doesn't matter what directory when we're running this stuff. So I'm gonna do the OpenSSL stuff right now, generating our secret database thing. Okay. All right. Creating our internal Docker network right here. There we go. Don't think I'm gonna need this, but I'm gonna copy it anyway. To copy things, I mean, you can press Control C, but it'll just give you another prompt. Doesn't matter. Don't think I'm gonna need that, but you know, whatever. Now we're gonna create our data volume for our database. There we go. Time to get this database going right now. All right, so this, you can change these names if you want to. I'm gonna leave it with the default names for now. You can also change the ports if you want to, but that's sort of an advanced thing. You know, you gotta know what you're doing right there. You know, if you're okay just using the database user and the database name wiki, then by all means, you can just copy and paste this. But if you want a different username, then you can change it. Get in our Getting our Postgres going. All right, cool. And now we're going to create all the stuff we need for it. And now we are doing the update companion. There we go. All right, next up, let's set up our firewall. We're gonna allow HTTP and HTTPS to come through. And then we're gonna force this to be enabled. All right, time to start our containers. So start in the database, excellent. Start in the wiki and then we're gonna start the wiki update companion. There we go. Start the wiki update companion. All right, it's running. Now we can check it out, see if it's there. We're just gonna to go to the HTTP. We're gonna enable HTTPS after. And it worked, that easy. So now we have our wiki right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and complete this on-screen setup and then we're gonna install the SSH. So my username, make a secure password, please. All right, so put in your domain name. That's the site URL. I don't want any telemetry right now. And then install. All right, so the first thing we need to do is just create a homepage. Uh, what's this gonna be a wiki about? It's gonna be a wiki about Ernest, of course. So let me get an Ernest picture, you know, why not? I want a nice, and I want a nice one here. Excellent. Yes, let's take that one. All right, I got some earnest material. Let's create a home page here, and we have several different options. I like to use the visual editor, but you can use Markdown or Code or whatever you're familiar with. If you have an existing template, you can bring that over, and we'll title this. And this will tell you where the path is going to be. This is just going to be our home page. We can create some tags here. Press Enter to make a tag. Ernest is kind of obvious, but yeah, hit OK. Here's our page. I'm going to drop some content, some slop that I absolutely f just found on the internet. Don't know where I got it. I'm just making a home page right here. Let's go ahead and uh, insert an image, shall we? Insert asset. All right, we got to upload us an image. Browse. Click on upload. The image thing's not as streamlined as I believe it should be. And you have to click on the image up here and then click on insert. There it is. Amazing. So right there it is. You know what? Something's bothering me. Let's click on administration, go to the administration page over here. But the thing I'm interested in right off the bat, theme. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Just click in dark mode. Now when we go back, click on exit up here for the administration area. Isn't this beautiful? Yes, it's AI slop, but it's important AI slop. There we go. And now we've got a home over here on the side. And you can just start creating trees by creating new pages up here. Let's make one more page and we'll turn it into a tree. commercials click on that it brings up you know all the other stuff that's nested underneath commercials I think you might be getting the idea hopefully let me show you a couple other things over here once you go in and start selecting how things work in the background 
All right, we can change our logo URL up there, all kinds of different little things you can do, but I'm not gonna go through all this. It's very self-explanatory and extremely easy to use. But I do wanna show you navigation. You click on that and we can do a site tree, which is the, the basically the classic way to do it. Do static, you can change the you know different navigation types. I like the site tree and apply. It just feels like a wiki. And if you're doing game dev or something, it's probably gonna be pretty handy. So there we go. You know, we got our site tree over here. There's not enough pages on here to make a lot of sense. So let me just uh, show you my little internal thing right here. See, I've got a whole bunch of things over here. So I'm not gonna show you too much, but show you this. See, I got my, this is for a game I'm working on. It's a secret right now. You can't see any of this tabletop game. I don't know if I should put it on Kickstarter or not, but yeah, so that's all under my species. I might change the name to race just because people are nostalgic for that, even though species is scientifically correct. Seems like people are getting very upset over that word. But yeah, here's my tabletop. That's something we made in Unreal Engine. But yeah, this is what it looks like when you have something that's up and running. Now let's go ahead and enable automatic HTTPS with Let's Encrypt. So first thing I need to do here is just go ahead and stop the wiki. So I'm gonna stop it and remove it and we're gonna shift insert, docker stop wiki. All right, we're gonna remove the container. Don't worry, it's not doing anything. And then we're gonna do a Let's Encrypt thing. So this is just a template. You gotta replace things with your own stuff. All right, this whole entire thing here, it's big, it's big. All right, so let's encrypt domain. You gotta put in your domain name right here. So I've already got wiki, so it's gonna be wiki.actionnerds.com. There we go. And your email address. All the rest of this should be the same unless you change anything else. You know, you gotta make sure you see your database right there. See all that? If you changed any of that while we were doing the initial setup, you're gonna have to change it here. If not, that's it. Just copy that and smack it in here. Press enter, okay. Start up the container again. All right, let's just go ahead and take a look at the logs here. Good, mail is not set up, that's fine. Let's encrypt, look at there. Success, blah, blah, blah. So now when we come back over here, we can just go to HTTPS, wiki.actionnerds.com. Excellent. Now we're cooking, we got HTTPS going, everything's pretty, and this is a very important uh, you know, site right now. I really like wiki.js. So getting this set up over here on AltaHost was extremely easy. Now, if you're running a website that has dynamic content or users that are doing stuff all the time and you wanna make backups, well, there's a couple different ways we can do that. So I'll show you that over here. Let's go over and uh, click on backups right here. We can do a new backup. I don't like to do a backup while the wiki is running if other people are using it. So I'm gonna to wanna to come back over here and again, just stop the wiki or whatever. Just come back over here and there we go, stop it. That way nothing can happen and when you're making a backup, it should just be, you know, fine. If stuff starts, you know, changing while you're making a backup, it can mess things up. So that's pretty much it. We can do a new backup right over here. Fast and good, yes. If I've got it stopped, I want the entire server stopped. This is the safest way. I like doing stop. And then we can just confirm. You got three backups that you can use. So that's really handy. We also have snapshots over here, which are a little different. These backups, you can configure to have them going all the time. But, you know, you can also just take a snapshot and title it, include the RAM, why not? But, you know, either way you want to do it is going to work. But it's, you know, snapshots especially are going to work better if the if the wiki stopped. If you have an active website, it's going to be down during the period of the backup. But for me, it's worth it unless you're, like, doing enterprise-grade stuff, in which case you're probably using Kubernetes, and I don't know why you're watching this video. Now, let's say you need a little more stuff. You know, like you got a big website, it's growing, it's using stuff. We have to pay our invoice. So whoever marketing person who set me this up pay the invoice so I can show people the downgrades and upgrades. But yeah, you can go in and add bigger packages or whatever. So that was extremely easy. I've noticed that the website is very snappy. Like it's just really snappy. Clicking on this snappy dresser, Mr. Ernest right there. Clicking around on the page. Clicking on this. Yeah, it's plenty snappy. So I love having my own, you know, server running things on the VPS. You just so much more power and so much more control over what you're doing so yeah had a very good experience with uh, AltaHost. no complaints whatsoever i really like their backup solutions i really like the fact that you don't have to pay an extra arm and a leg for all that kind of stuff it's just like you know included this is something that i don't currently get with the other service that i'm using and it makes me sad like i i love this you get three backups hmm. 
Anyway, let me know what you think about this. Do you want to look at some Kanbans and all that kind of stuff? Do you want to look at that? Is that something that's interesting to you? Let me know. Do you want more tips on like wikis or whatever? I don't know. Let me know what sort of tutorials you'd like to see. Let me know what you think of Ultahost and the dashboard and everything like that. Is it easy? Does it make sense to your brain? Let me know. I'm curious. Post all that down in the description. I'll see you later.